All right. So if you look at my channel over like the last maybe three months, one recurring conversation that I'm always having is I'm always talking about how wide open everything is across the league. There is no clear cut favorite to win anything. And that is a major contrast to what we were subjected to as fans during the Warriors era where Golden State was just so dominant. We were expecting them to get to the finals every single season. And the same with Cleveland, where they were just dominating the Eastern Conference every single year. I think we got like four straight finals matchups between those two teams. And now, as I said, we are seeing that things are super wide open. There is no clear cut favorite to do anything. There could be a two different teams in the NBA finals this coming season than what we had last season, right? Look at the last couple of NBA finals in 2022. It was the Celtics and the Warriors. 2023 was the Nuggets and the Heat. And this year it was the Celtics and the Mavericks. And that conversation about things being super wide open has also kind of carried itself into like player debates. Right now, it is very tough to say who is definitively the best player in the league. Some people will say Jokic, other people will say somebody else. Maybe there are some people that still think Curry is the best player in the league and some other guys in that conversation, maybe Luka, right? So that's super wide open and that carries also over to the Eastern Conference. I was kind of thinking the other day, who is the best player in the East, right? Who has proven themselves as the guy in that particular conference? And that's what I'm going to focus on on this video is by ranking the top three players in the stacked Eastern Conference. And before I get into these three guys, my number one honorable mention off the bat is going to be Jason Tatum. If you would have asked me like a couple years ago, if Jason Tatum would have been looked at as the best player in the NBA after winning his first championship, I would have said yes. But after winning his first title, a lot of people don't know if he's a top five player in this league. And a lot of people debate whether or not he's even the best player on this Celtics roster so it is hard to include him on that list as I said a long time ago I would have thought he would have ended up being the best player in the east at some point in time especially after his first championship but that's not what the case is and I don't want to like say that to like downplay his accomplishments and what he's done because he is still a great all-around player and I think it is also kind of counterproductive to sit and look at the Celtics and debate who their best player is that's not how that team is run they're not run through one guy it could be any guy any single night so that's kind of how that team is. But again, for the sake of this conversation, Tatum is great. I appreciate the things he's done, but he's not a top three player in the Eastern Conference for a number of reasons. But regardless of that, he is just spectacular for that Celtics team. And I do think if he continues to kind of focus on this all around Swiss Army knife type of niche that he's put out for himself over the last couple of seasons where he's just great all around threat with his scoring ability and his passing and his defense and his rebounding, he can get there. But right now, not ready to call him a top three player in the Eastern Conference just yet. So he is the honorable mention. I wanted to mention that off the bat. So getting into the list at number three, I'm going to start with Jalen Brunson. So it is time to accept that Jalen Brunson is now on this level where he is one of the best, three best players in his conference. Things could have been different with Lillard uh, being in the Eastern Conference now. Things went wrong for the Bucks last season. Obviously, he never really found that much chemistry and never really got in sync with that offense. And there was that disappointing first round series that was just kind of plagued by injuries. So if Lillard was healthy, this conversation would be a bit different. Maybe he would be within his top three. But things happen the way things happen. Happened and Jalen Brunson just played at an extremely high level. He led the Knicks to the playoffs as the second seed in the Eastern Conference and just had insane numbers with insane all-around efficiency. Put up 28.7 points, 6.7 assists, and 47% shooting, along with 40% shooting from three. And he's gone 40% from three in his last two seasons for the Knicks and even his yearly playoff averages since being a number one option here in New York have been pretty good in the 2022-23 season he averaged 27.8 points in the playoffs and in the 2023-24 season which was last season he put up 32 points per game on ridiculously high usage so he's a very durable player on top of these ridiculous numbers that he's been putting up. And then there's also the brand aspect of it, right? He has one of the best brands in the league, right? He is somebody who needs a ton of credit for revitalizing one of the premier franchises in all of sports. He is the face of the New York Knicks, which is one of the biggest, most popular American sports franchises, right? And I don't want to take too much credit away because Julius Randle was there when the Knicks started to become good again. I think he was there uh, for the first time they were able to make the playoffs since 2013. So I want to give him credit, but Brunson has taken things to an entirely different level and has stamped himself as their number one option and simply one of the best point guards in the NBA. 
Next up for him is entering that best point guard in the league conversation. Curry right now still has it, but he is entering the end of his prime. You never know, though, how many years he has left on that with his insane shooting ability. But outside of Curry, that spot is 100% up for grabs, and Jalen Brunson could easily see himself in that position in no time. Next guy on my list at number two, I have Joel Embiid. So, I was a little reluctant to put Embiid over Brunson because I think if we just look at things last season and how things ended last season, Brunson was better. But I will give Joel Embiid this. He had a ton of injuries last season that kind of kept him out. When he was out there on the floor for the Sixers during the regular season especially, he was ridiculous. The numbers were insane. I'm talking a 70-point game and two 50-point games. He averaged nearly 35 points. He would have definitely been the league MVP if he didn't get hurt, and Philly probably would have been a number two seed or number three seed at the worst if the injury didn't hit him. So for that reason, it's tough to put Brunson over Embiid. Uh, he also had his best playoff averages last season with over 30 points per game. That's a little bit inflated because it was just one round. It was a first round loss against the Knicks. But either way, he played at a high level when he was out there on the court for that Sixers team. Now, the obvious thing here for Embiid, as other people say, is his playoff issues have kept him from entering the best player in the league conversations. He clearly has that type of upside and talent, but the playoff issues, the playoff blunders, the inconsistency over the years, that's why he's not there just yet. So for Embiid this coming season, it's about taking all of this into the postseason he is one of the only players who was considered a top three player in the league who has not made an NBA finals appearance let alone a conference finals appearance that's what it's going to be about this season and I said it on a couple videos ago the excuses are limited right this is the best supporting cast he's ever had with Tyrese Maxey along with Paul George who's still playing at a very high all-star level as a primary scoring option. So we'll see what Embiid is being able to do this coming season, but a lot of eyes are on him. But I think he's done more than enough to solidify himself as at least the second best player in the Eastern Conference. And sitting at number one in the Eastern Conference is Giannis Antetokounmpo. So last year was not a pretty one for the Bucks, a lot of expectations with him and Damian Lillard being this all-star, superstar level duo. And Giannis was relatively unhealthy compared to other years, but his numbers were still completely off the wall. And it was simply one of the greatest seasons of his NBA career so far. He put up 30 points, 11 rebounds, and nearly seven assists per game. One thing I really want people to pay attention to are those seven assists per game. Giannis does not get credit for how great of a passer he is. He is simply one of the most underrated passers in the entire league. It has been that way for a minute, and he put it on full display last season for the Bucks. This team they have right now is an amazing supporting cast. There's Dame, there's Chris Middleton. They picked up Gary Trent, who is a really good 3 and D player, and I think has all defensive first team, at least second team type of upside. It is a great supporting cast. And Doc Rivers has had an entire offseason to put together a game plan for this Bucks team. For them also, the excuses are limited. Outside of health, this team should have things figured out this year. I understand why things were weird last season. They went through a bunch of different head coaches. So they essentially went through three head coaches in under a year. They fired Budenholzer, then got Adrian Griffin. And after a couple of games, they fired Adrian Griffin. And now there's Doc Rivers. So I understand why there was some stuff that hindered their performance last season. They were also trying to fit Damian Lillard onto a new team. This year, excuses are limited. They've had more than enough time to get things figured out. If they're healthy, they should be the best team, at least the second best team in the Eastern Conference. And Giannis will end up being the best player on that team. I definitely think he still has a ton left in him to win a few more MVP awards. And for him at this point in his career, it's all about legacy building. He's already shown he can get to the finals and win a title, right? He's already shown that ability. There are some other guys in the NBA right now who are great but we question if they are championship-level players. Giannis has proven he is a championship-level player already, so the next step is showing the ability to consistently get at that level, right? If we look at some superstars who are like the all-time greats, one thing that separates other guys from other guys is how consistent they are, right? How many times they're able to make it to that level, to that championship level, and win those titles, right? Jordan did it six times. LeBron did it four. Kobe did it five times. That's the thing for Giannis. He's legacy building. He's trying to prove himself as one of the greatest players of all time. In order for you to do that, 
You have to show consistency from a championship standpoint, and that's where he's trying to get at. Because there's no doubt, he is one of the most intriguing talents the game has ever seen, but for him, it is just going to be about him getting to that final stage on a consistent basis. And the fact of the matter is, since 2021, the Bucs have been a pretty disappointing team. They have not followed up that championship very well at all, failing to get the NBA Finals since then. So we'll see what Giannis and the Bucs end up doing, but it is very hard to say that anybody right now in the Eastern Conference is better than him. I could say Embiid, but again, I'm comparing Embiid's availability to Giannis's availability, and Giannis was just more available, and when he was out there on the court last season, he was just better, right? Like, eh, Embiid was a better scorer, but I think Giannis's all-around game was almost at the best it's ever been last season in his career, so you can kind of split hairs with that, but one thing that tips the scale in Giannis's favor is, for one, the defense, and also the availability. He's a more reliable player when it comes to him being out there on the court for his team. So those are the three best players, the top three players in the Eastern Conference. I got Jalen Brunson, Joel Embiid, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. And hopefully these guys end up following up their dominant seasons last year and are even better this coming season, especially for Giannis and Joel Embiid. And for Jalen Brunson, let's see if this is the season where he can finally get the Knicks over that second round hump and actually into NBA Finals, NBA Championship contention.